back to Handloader TV. I'm your host, Jeremiah, and in this episode, we're going to take an in-depth look at the Master Series Handgun Rest from Ransom International. Ransom International has been making handgun rests for decades. They have a long-standing history of accuracy and performance when it comes to testing handguns and rifles as well. They're a local company based out of Prescott Valley, Arizona. We're over in Prescott, so we're kind of neighbors. It's really nice. We can swing over there and pick up grip inserts and whatever we need. These rests are a staple for accuracy testing in our industry. Many major firearms manufacturers use these to test for accuracy and reliability of their handguns. We've been using this quite a bit here on the channel and you've probably seen it featured in some of our previous videos, most recently the 454 Kazool. So we're going to go ahead and walk you through how this rest works, uh, detail its operation, show you guys what you need to know about using it, how to use it properly, and then we're going to do a little bit of shooting and accuracy testing in some of these firearms before us. So let's go ahead and dive right in and we'll take a look at how this thing works. In taking a look at this rest from the ground up here, we have the optional base plate installed on this particular model, which features four adjustment knobs for leveling the base and lock rings here to lock it in. We also have the optional windage base installed on our model, so that way it's easily, easily adjusted for windage and then you have your elevation adjustment up here, which makes it really nice. Typically, you'll see three football knobs on this model, but we have removed the third one here and replaced it with a nut. We've also removed the stud here and the acorn nut. The reasoning behind this is with heavy kicking cartridges like 454 Kazool and 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, the rest will need to fully recoil. And if you leave that on there, it'll strike the base or you could hit the football knob. So we've removed that. Also, when it comes to the heavier hitting cartridges, the studs here, which hold the grip inserts, should be replaced for the hardened studs, which we have also done. It's a very simple process to remove those. You simply unscrew these three nuts here, pull off the cable pull or your trigger bar there, and thread the new studs in. Very simple, very easy. So now let's go ahead and show you how to install a firearm into this properly. Here we have a grip insert, which they're custom molded for each firearm in your particular model. We're going to use the 1911 grip inserts. I've got my Kimber here, and they're already installed. You simply slide them onto the studs and make sure that the trigger bar here is set correctly. Install it on there. And the trick with the 1911s is you got to remove the grips, which you'll have to do on pretty much any model, except for these polymer framed guns. So remove the grips and then make sure that as you install this guy into the inserts, that you depress right in here the grip safety. You want to make sure that is engaged properly. So that way your gun will actually fire while it's in the rest. That looks pretty good there. And then from here, it should stay on there pretty good. And I've got my side plate here and washers that will go on the studs. And then these thumb screws here. It's a pretty simple process. You just throw that on the side plate there, reinstall the washers, and you can tighten these guys up. No problem. This is also though where a lot of mistakes are made when it comes to installation of the firearms. You want to make sure that these thumb screws here are not over tightened. You want to resist that temptation to over tighten everything. I know I have that, but we use a two finger method here. You just simply take the knobs, rotate them in a crisscross pattern, tightening them until they feel pretty snug and you have a decent amount of resistance with just two fingers. And then usually you'll see the gap is pretty even on the grip inserts, and that's about it. 
From here you're ready to fire a few settling shots to get your firearm settled into the grip inserts and then begin accuracy testing. So we're going to go ahead and take this setup, head out to the range. We'll bring in a few different firearms and show you how the rest works in a real world. Let's hit the range. So we're out at the range now. We have a Kimber 1911 chambered in 45 ACP locked down in our Ransom International Master Series rest. We've resisted the urge to over tighten these knobs. They're just snug, two fingers. And we fired about eh, 30 rounds to settle it in, get it on paper, hitting where we want it to roughly. And we're good to go now. So first up, we have here Vitavori N340 powder, a 6.5 grain charge, 230 grain Hornady full metal jacket, Federal 150 primers, Winchester cases, and an overall length of 1.260 inches. So let's go ahead and see how these guys group and how repeatable this load is. And there you have it, five shots. And when you're returning this to battery, you never want to push down on the gun or the grip inserts or any part of this. You want to push down like right here. That's where I like to push. And then that won't affect your repeatability. So there you have it. So now we have a Cimarron Single Action Army and 45 Colt locked in on our Ransom Master Series rest. We've got our knobs tightened down, snugged up, but not over tightened. And we're going to go ahead and test this gun and see how it groups. This first load is using 8.5 grains of Unique with a Remington cast round nose, 250 grain bullet, Winchester cases, Federal 150 primers, and an overall length of 1.670 inches. Here we go. And there you have it, there's our five shots. So for this load, we're locked and loaded, ready to go. We're using power pistol powder, a 10 grain charge, and a rim rock cast semi wad cutter flat base sized to 0.452 inches. It's a 270 grain bullet. We've got Starline cases and Remington seven and a half primers. Overall length, 1.715 inches. Let's go ahead, see how it does. Looks pretty good, there's our five shots. So we're back from the range now. We've crunched the numbers and let's go ahead and dive right into the results. Taking a look at our first uh, test gun here, we used a Kimber Crimson Carry 2, chambered in 45 ACP. 
and we used a 6.5 grain charge of Vitivori N340, 230 grain Hornady full metal jacket, and we produced a group of 0.98 inches, a standard deviation of 20. So nothing stellar, but uh, anything under an inch I'm usually pretty happy with at 15 yards. So not too bad. And all in all, the uh, reliability and the performance of this rest is, is outstanding. So then we went ahead and pulled the 1911 out and swapped it for this Cimarron right here. And we locked it down, fired a few settling shots, and then we ran one of my personal favorite loads through it, a pet load of mine, using eight grains of unique powder and a Remington 250 grain uh, cast round nose. Sadly, that bullet is now discontinued, but maybe there's a mold manufacturer out there or somebody that is duplicating this bullet because it's one of the f my personal favorites. And that produced a group size of 1.12 inches. Not too shabby. And I know that from shooting this gun extensively, that that's a pretty good group for it. A standard deviation of eight. Pretty happy with that. <coughs> Moving along, we went ahead and swapped out the Cimarron for our Freedom Arms Model 83, chambered in 454 Kazool. And we used Power Pistol Powder, a 10 grain charge, and a Rimrock 270 grain semi wad cutter cast bullet. And that produced a 0.57 inch group. Pretty happy with that, pretty stellar. And if you guys want to see more of this rest in action, we've used it in past videos, most recently, the 454 Kazool video. And we had outstanding reliability and repeatability when it came to using this rest. In fact, we even swapped cylinders on that revolver and the point of impact remained relatively the same. I think it was within an inch or two. So pretty outstanding testament to the quality and accuracy of this rest. So with all that being said, I think for the money and what you're getting, it's more than worth it for testing lots of ammunition, whether they be factory ammo or hand loads. And I can definitely see uh, the benefit to it because you remove all the human error. You don't have to worry if you threw that shot or if maybe or you weren't holding it quite as tight or it eliminates all your variables. And it really speeds up the load development process. We can zip through a uh, hundred rounds in this guy much faster than if I was to sit there and shoot it myself. So it's a great time saver, and to me, that makes it worth the money. But you've seen it for yourselves, and now you guys can decide if this is something you want to add to your toolkit. So we want to thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified when we post our next video. And as always, if you have any questions or concerns, Leave them in the comments below. We do our best to read every one of those. So until next time, good shooting and happy handling.